a couple of years ago, you launched the DES, DENS diversity program. Yeah. Um, these are uh, incredible <coughs> initiatives and certainly to be welcomed, but why has diversity and inclusion become such an important element of, of what the organization does? Well, from a business perspective, um, a third of my workforce is uh, over the age of 50. Of those, uh, a quarter of them are over the age of, uh, uh, sorry, a quarter of my total workforce is over the age of 55. Mm. So if I project 10 years ahead, uh, I'll have lost uh, a third of my workforce, which is not atypical for any uh, large engineering or program management mm. enterprise, which uh, defense equipment and support is. So um, to go and try and do the same thing uh, in terms of recruiting uh, as we are, uh, is not going to work. Um, if we don't get more diversity in, into the workforce, then we're ignoring uh, a significant talent base mm. uh, in, in the local population. So diversity in terms of, uh, uh, of gender, uh, we're about 32%, um, about 32% women uh, at the moment, and that's rising year on year. So we're getting a lot of momentum, mm. and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a much more uh, inclusive Inclusive, much more diverse work workforce as a result. So what's been done to attract greater diversity within the organization? Well, if I talk, if I talk about gender, um, uh, I think uh, um, we've, we've just got to make the, um, uh, the organization more open uh, to different ways of uh, operating, uh, different behaviors. Um, we've been very strong on trying to uh, bring in flexible working patterns uh, so that uh, whatever um, gender you are, uh, that you can, uh, you, you can accommodate your work within, within your own life. That's had a very positive effect. And I think also uh, role models uh, are, are important as well. Um, and uh, what I need to do is to get more of the, uh, the talented, uh, diverse wor workforce pulled through into the senior community. And that's not going to happen overnight, is it? No. But it sounds like with getting to that 32% mark, that's pretty much ahead of where the corporate world is. So what you're doing seems to be working perhaps more ex efficiently, effectively, and, and more quickly than it is in the corporate world. Well, I, I look at it, I don't think we're any better or, or worse than anyone else, but I think what we have done is built a, a good foundation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about attracting, um, you know, gender, diversity, BAME. It, it's about attracting people into the organization. Um, it's a specialist organization, mm -hmm. so they're going to have to build their, uh, their skills base um, to be eligible for, for more advancement. Um, so that's what we've got, we've got to do, and we've got to look for talent, and we've got to nurture it and provide them with opportunities. Mm -hmm. How many people are in the organization? Uh, just under 12,000. Wow. Not all in Bristol, yeah. uh, distributed uh, um, to a number of uh, regional spots uh, yeah. throughout the United Kingdom. That kind of leads on to the next question, really, which is about how do when, when you have such a, a large team spread in multiple locations mm. how do you get them working together as a single unit as a single yeah. team it's a it's a it's a difficult one and it's mm. um, it's a conversation I often have with my my colleagues uh, in industry uh, and there's a sweet spot there because you want to get um, you want to be part of a brand yeah. um, you want to get uh, a sort of a single mission uh, and goal for the organization um, but at the same time, uh, an over-centralized, over-controlling organization strips, uh, strips the life out of it, strips away the innovation. So I think it's having that, um, that singularity of mission, of purpose, but actually giving people uh, some freedom to innovate, some freedom to, um, uh, to lead their own small teams and achieve uh, their goals. So difficult balance. Yeah, not easy at all. I mean, the your department organization um, and also the, the, the wider armed forces as well, you're facing an awful lot of challenges mm. at the moment. Obviously, there's 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 cuts in defence spending. There's um, the threat from certain you know instability in Asia. Mm -hmm. you've got the cyber threat. Um, mental health is has obviously come to the fore and been given greater attention in recent yeah. years as well. Um, there there are an awful lot of challenges to overcome. How how do you manage that? Do you focus on 
key priorities or do you yeah. try and tackle all of it at the same time and no, chip I think, away um, I think one of the mistakes you can make uh, as a senior executive team is to come up with a plan that, that solves everything mm -hmm. and what you end up with is something that nobody understands and it, and it, and it solves nothing. Yeah. Um, so in terms of our change plan, um, if I look back two years ago, it was probably uh, slightly overcomplicated. Uh, it was difficult to uh, uh, communicate and we uh, boiled it down to three things. People can remember three things. Yeah. Great people, great delivery, great place to work. Um, that's the focus of yeah. the organization collectively. And then uh, essentially we're um, a, a collection of project teams uh, and within that framework the project teams have got their own uh, delivery goals whether it being right. delivering yeah. ships, aircraft yeah. uh, or, or land equipment on the ground. Yeah. What got you into this side of things? Where, where, where did your career start, and uh, you know, and uh, it was just a natural progression for you to get. Oh, started? 35 years in in the Royal Air Force, fantastic career. Um, the latter part of it was spent mainly uh, in defence acquisition um, as part of defence equipment and support, and some of its mm. predecessor organisations. Um, so I've always had a passion, not just for the Royal Air Force, but for defence um, and really providing uh, equipment and support to the front line. Um, uh, it, it has its frustrations, it takes, it takes time, but the satisfaction I get of uh, seeing one of the teams get a big program over the, over the line uh, into the hands of the front line um, is fantastic. So when the opportunity came up to come back into the organisation as a civilian, uh, in fact as my wife said to me, we, we love defence, um, why don't you apply for it and uh, two years on, here I am. Yeah. Good move? Yeah, I yeah. think it's a good move. <laughs> well, maybe for others to judge, but certainly uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, logistically, getting goods delivered on time must be, I mean, you must be the most amazing organizer in the world. Well, uh, I'm, as my wife would uh, tell you, extremely disorganized. Um, but, uh, what <laughs> I, home, but what, I, what I rely on is, uh, is people that, that, uh, uh, that can uh, organize well. And I think what you refly, uh, refer to there is the, uh, is the supply chain. Um, and it is the most diverse supply chain uh, that you could imagine. Everything from boots uh, through to uh, complex uh, aircraft and, and, and weapons. So mobilizing the supply chain, getting things there on time uh, is a very significant part uh, of the objectives of the organization. Quite a lot of the focus is on the, uh, the end platforms we buy, the ships, the tanks, the aircraft, but actually, uh, as you point out, the logistics is vital. So you've touched on it already about the importance of having a good team around you. I mean, how, how does it work? Do you have like, you know, separate divisions, separate departments? And how, how yeah. do you decide what makes for a good leader within the organization? Yeah. Um, so we are, um, so there are three services and a joint, um, joint forces command. So I have three divisions that face off to, uh, to the, uh, sorry, four divisions that <laughs> face off to uh, uh, the customer base. Um, and there's a high degree of self-determination uh, in those organizations. I mean, they're big, big organizations, um, uh, up to about 2,000 people. Um, so the people that I've got there are uh, high quality uh, individuals. Uh, it doesn't just stop there, but they've got a lot of high quality people uh, working for them. Um, and the, the selection and the training per, um, that, that they go through, um, I think is that very thorough. And uh, I think we've got some very dedicated and very professional people there. What are you most proud of in your career to date? Oh, well, I, I've been asked this question uh, uh, a number of times and uh, um, I'm not really proud of any, I can't really single out any achievement that, that I'm um, personally proud of, but what I will say is, my, uh, is what I love 
doing is leading large teams um, and I've been privileged as a military commander uh, and through into my acquisition career uh, I've had the privilege of leading some uh, fantastic uh, teams, some talented people. Um, so my proudest achievements are their achievements, uh, delivering, uh, delivering uh, on time, on cost uh, to, uh, uh, to the front line and I'm proud of the people I've developed as well. People that I've uh, seen come into the organisation early on, I've seen, seen rise through the organisation and uh, knocking on my door saying, when are you leaving? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm after the job. That's when you know you've done a good job. <laughs> um, the final question is, when you're managing and leading teams of hundreds, thousands in your case of people and you know competing challenges from you know locally and around the globe but also having to be responsible for you know the powers that be number 10. Um, you must have learned a number of key lessons when it comes to leadership and this evening's audience is going to be full of current and aspiring business leaders as well. Mm -hmm. Is there a single piece of advice that you would that you impart on them? I give them two bits of, of advice. One is absolute focus on the uh, outcomes that you're trying to, trying to achieve uh, and don't deviate from them. And the second is that everything we achieve is about our people. So develop your people, uh, they'll repay you in terms of their loyalty, uh, invest in them, they'll develop and they'll take the business forward. Wonderful. Sir Simon, thank you so much. Thank you. Time.